So I'm Phil Holden. I worked for a company that had people from India and China and Korea and America and, uh, um, of course, England. Uh, working with uh, customers from all over the world was a pain. The issues we faced in that team were primarily um, issues with communication between engineers and communications with engineers in other companies. Engineers assume that what they're saying, somebody understands. Um, I had many engineers in my team that thought they knew everything, um, especially, I'd say, the English and American ones, thought they could get on with everybody in the world, but that wasn't the case, not easily. It became very difficult. We would ask a question, we would get an answer, but it was not the answer to the question we asked. And, and that was not just a communication of language, that was actually a communication skill that just was not happening. We really were not communicating properly with customers. Nobody believed that they had a real problem, even though they understood they were not communicating well. It took me about six months of persuasion to actually get people to sit down and say, OK, let's talk to Stuart. Just a brief conversation with Stuart is an enlightenment and it makes you want to do the class. As we worked through the workshops, the uh, um, engineers in my team started to go, wow, now I understand. Because some of the communications with other engineers, even though they were peers, just were not clear enough across the different cultures. So I'd often set up a Chinese engineer to talk to a Chinese engineer in Chinese, and then we'd get there. But, uh, you know, I had a lot of Indians in the team and a lot of other cultures and talk, that using those to talk to Chinese engineers just wasn't working well until Stuart taught them what people were saying to us before we try and tell them what they have to do. The nuances that Stuart built into his workshop, which is an amazing amount of information in such a short amount of time, helped us understand what we were listening to. They watch Stuart, they become part of his, um, his way of teaching like you would if you were a, um, a kindergarten kid listening to a, a teacher that you loved. They actually liked the communications, they loved to hear some of the things that Stuart did in, in, in his um, time as an um, engineer, salesperson, marketing, whatever he was doing at the time because he learned a lot of this stuff in all of those different um, areas. Um, they, they like to listen to that. They like to hear it. They like to be told some of the things that were um, found by Stuart doing things wrong at the time and learning from that himself. And that helped them learn um, some of the things they were doing wrong, which was a very good way of, of actually teaching, I think. We actually became the team that everybody wanted to talk to because we could now communicate with them very well. Some of the funniest things were um, engineers actually saying, to themselves about what Stuart would have said. And that actually turned them around. In moving forward with that, they actually started to learn some of the things that they were doing and saying. And the workshops, by the way, with Stuart were about 12 years ago now. And, and believe it or not, that team, a lot of that team is still together today. And they still today say, well, I think Stuart would have said that differently. <laughs> and they go back through it. I think uh, Stuart's method of teaching is, is uh, exemplary in, in communication. So there should be no hesitation in talking to Stuart about whether you should do this or not. And as I say, just a quick conversation before you even engage is, is worth uh, um, a huge volume of, of words.